Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for the warm introduction. You rock. Everybody in this room rocks. Let's rock this thing together. All right. So uh, we're going to jump right into this. We are going to move very, very fast. I've been doing this since 2001. It has uh, led to a whole lot of learning over the years. And we are going to start with social proof. This is by far the most valuable thing that you can do for your business, especially if you're just starting out. If you do not have at least 10 reviews on Google Places, you are missing out on potentially thousands, if not tens of thousands, and depending on the size of your company, hundreds of thousands of dollars in potential new business. Uh, there's been a lot of studies done on this. That is a huge, huge factor. People are going to look you up. They're going to find out everything they need to know about you, and it's going to start with those reviews. And Google bought Zagat. I think they're in the process of selling Zagat back, but the reality is, is they worked that review system into that, and it's a big part of their algorithm. And in addition to the fact that those reviews are a huge impact with your potential clients doing research on you, it actually also has a huge impact on your SEO rankings. And a lot of people don't realize that. If you don't have 10 reviews, you will, be, uh, you will not get the bonus points from, from Google's algorithm. All right, jumping on to the next one here. Uh, here is something that a lot of people don't think about. Uh, they don't think about it very much, uh, but it's probably because it wasn't as common in the past. It is, this is becoming very, very common, uh, and it is actually starting to damage companies' sales. What's happening is, is people aren't, na aren't just doing research on your brand anymore. They're now Googling you, they're Googling the executives in your company. They're Googling your partners. They're Googling your employees. What does that mean for your business? If their personal branding, their personal SEO isn't accurate and isn't correct, how does that impact your business? Think about that very closely. This particular tool here is actually a pretty incredible SaaS tool. Uh, I, am, I put it to use about six months ago with a stress test on my own brand. And uh, I have a very common name. Uh, Scott Mann is relatively common. And uh, the reality is, is I am uh, 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 a speaker uh, from the Marine Corps. Uh, I am a mayor in the UK. Uh, if you have safe search turned off, all sorts of weird stuff pops up. Uh, <laughs> So the reality is I needed to take over the front page of Google uh, with a little bit more authority. I employed this tool. I used the free version of it. I did not use the paid version of it. And I literally just followed the steps. They're all, if, you, if you're in the SEO world, they're all kind of common sense steps. But it handholds you, walks, through, walks you through, and gives you a process. And it's beautiful. It's very well done SaaS software. And uh, I honestly, I put in about two and a half hours of labor over a period of two weeks. And uh, it, it gave me another three spots on Google's top 10 for my name. Uh, so that's a, an incredible return on investment. And I highly recommend you don't do, just do it for yourself. You should make sure that everybody in your organization does this as well. Uh, we are, again, jumping around like crazy. Now we're going to jump over into Google AdWords. This is uh, another opportunity a lot of people skip. Uh, because of all the horror stories, they burn money, we tried the thing, it didn't work. Uh, uh, but the reality is, is it's still one of the absolute most effective ways uh, to do advertising in the world because it has such a trackable ROI. Uh, and really, to do this correctly, there's only a couple tweaks that you need to do that can give you an 80% turnaround on what you think might be a failed campaign or a failed effort. And uh, one of those, very specifically, is focusing on that quality score. Uh, it, when you first load up Google AdWords, if it, uh, how many people in here have used Google AdWords before or have tried it for their business or use it daily? OK, awesome. So uh, most people in here have probably seen that back end interface. And when you're looking at the data on your keywords, when you're looking at your keyword list, uh, by default, Google does not have the quality score displayed. You actually have to go in and change the settings in there to display that quality score. And that quality score is going to be a number between 1 and 10. Once you pull up that quality score, you might be shocked to find that the majority of your keywords in your failed campaigns uh, might have lower numbers. 
Uh, what does that mean? That means that you're getting penalized heavily by Google because of a number of different factors. We don't have time to go into the details on it today, uh, but there are a lot of algorithmic pieces to the puzzle, but it's really just an alignment of your ad and your landing page and your keywords. And the more out of alignment they are, typically the lower your quality score is. So the quick practical fix right now is pull up that quality score, sort your keyword phrases by that quality score number, and then literally delete every keyword in that campaign that has a quality score of six or lower. If you do that, you will be performing absolute magic on the potential success of that campaign. The other one thing that you can do very, very quickly that will have an amazing impact uh, I'll tell you a very brief story, uh, and that story is we had a client that uh, a potential client was coming to us. He said, hey, I'm spending uh, $10,000 a month on Google AdWords, and uh, I think I'm paying this other agency too much to do this business, and uh, it's successful, but I think it could be more successful. I've just got a bad feeling about it. So we pulled up his account. And uh, I looked up uh, the keywords that were being activated in his account using the, the search auction insights, which at the time wasn't displayed by default, but now Google puts this prominently when you first log in. It's, it's showing search auction, auction insights as one of the primary navigation links. Uh, and I asked this guy, he did, he, he did sod installation uh, throughout the state of Florida, and uh, I asked him one question, and this question is what landed us this client. I asked him, uh, do you do hydrotherapy? And he said, yes, yes I do. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a type of lawn maintenance procedure uh, using, using, uh, using water. We're, we're providing water therapy on the lawn. I said, yeah, 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 but do you do colon hydrotherapy? <laughs> $56 per click for this medical procedure. And he was getting six of those per day. So, very, very simple process. Click on those keywords, scan that list, and, and burn with fire by adding negative keyword terms for every, every search phrase in there that might be activating your ads that doesn't have anything to do with you or your client's business. Those two things will have a massive impact on creating positive, successful ROI AdWords campaigns. All right, very quickly, uh, this is just a quick, easy to remember thing when you're, uh, when you're running with social media. We're jumping to the next, the next topic here. Use the 511 rule. Uh, some people go 411, some people might go 611, but this is a really, really simple guide that you can follow and even, even pitch to clients if you're, if you're in the social media space and you do it lightly. Uh, it's it's, it's such, such an easy way to think about it and most people can't wrap their heads around how am I supposed to use social media, how can, I, how can I use it for my business to create some value? Uh, just following, following the rule of, of curation for, for five posts, essentially, and by the way, that curation should be a good mix of, of curation. It should be informational stuff, it should be funny stuff. Uh, don't, don't forget to inject your brand's personality or your client's brand's personality into those social media campaigns. And then one that's linking back to your content on your website, and then one and only one, that's the limit, that's the maximum, you're, you're basically saying, hey, I'm giving you all of this great content, I'm bringing all of this curation to you, and I'm making only one ask, hey, this is one of the ways that you can engage and do business with us. That's how you avoid uh, having too much self-promotion in your social media accounts. All right, uh, this one might be just uh, look at the slide later, take a picture of it, I'm just gonna skip through it, but this is a very actionable, thing that you can do very quickly to get some amazing information that's kind of hidden in the back end of Facebook pages. So if you have a Facebook page account, just uh, log into that account, follow these steps, and you will be shocked at the information you find, especially when you start comparing you or your clients to your competitors or theirs. All right, and to wrap this thing up, uh, this is also another thing, you might wanna take a picture of this and just follow the procedure. This wraps us back up to the most valuable part of this conversation, which is getting those reviews, whether it's on, in this case, it's specific to Google. It is really, really hard to get people to leave reviews on Google. So I, I have a feeling, you know, that's a, that's a common question that we get. 
How do we make it easier on our clients to do that? This is kind of a hack where if you follow these instructions, you can give your clients, or you can even build this for your client, but you can give your clients a link to where if they click on it from an email or anywhere else, it will immediately take them to the home page of Google and then pop up the screen asking them to leave a review. It's magic, especially if they have a, a Google account, obviously. Uh, but that's, that, is, that is probably one of the most valuable little tiny hacks that you can employ in your business to work on getting those Google reviews faster. All right, any questions, anybody? I think I can do that. Uh, did I go back too far? There we go. Is that the one you wanted, Facebook? All right. Uh, well, it depends on the client. So uh, his question is, uh, how do you handle ratio of ad spend, uh, social media versus AdWords? And the, the answer is, is very, very specific to each individual industry and each individual client. Uh, what we're finding is, is uh, two years ago, Facebook ads were where R all the ROI was. Uh, that is, is waning very quickly. We're, we're starting actually to just tell clients to boost every single post that they make on there to, to create additional traction if they have a budget for it. Um, but the reality is uh, Google AdWords is specifically for, for people who are actively searching to solve a problem or to do business with somebody. So if the business gets their business through, through active searchers, then that's where I would put the, the largest ratio. If the business is looking for more, uh, more brand awareness, uh, then Facebook tends to be a lot more effective towards creating brand awareness. So, uh, but again, it depends on the business. We've seen some crazy success with e-commerce pro products on Facebook, uh, especially if it's one of those um, uh, like uh, impulse buy type products. Facebook's magic for that too. All right, his question is a uh, recommendation on frequency on social media. Uh, and again, to, uh, that specific question is very dependent on the specific client. Uh, and there's a couple factors. One is, what kind of resources do you have? And uh, if you have infinite resources, let's say you have a full-time dedicated person on social media, the reality is, is there's no such thing as too much. Uh, social media, think about social media as you're at a party and uh, you're really just trying to make friends with everybody at the party. The cooler you are, uh, the more people you engage with, uh, the more conversations you have, the more likely it is for you to, to be able to help somebody. And at the end of the day, that's what every business's job is, what every person's job in here is. It's to help somebody. And so the more you're, it's just like this word camp, the more you're out there talking to all the different groups of people and meeting strangers, the better. There is no upper limit on social media engagement. Uh, yeah. What do you think about remarketing? Uh, who would you use for remarketing? Excellent. So his question is, uh, what do I think about remarketing, and uh, who would we use for remarketing? Uh, do you mean tools or? Uh, well, yeah, specifically. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, specifically, uh, we do some remarketing. Obviously, uh, Google uh, is, is, you know, on the retargeting side of things, is is just magic with certain types of clients and certain types of industries. Uh, we do use a lot of ad roll. That tool makes it so incredibly simple to, to, to roll out with campaigns like that. Uh, and who, what? Ad roll. Ad roll, yes. That is, uh, that is absolutely the tool. That's the only one that we use when we're doing retargeting uh, stuff. So, yeah. So I have a Absolutely. So his question is, uh, and I'll, I'll kind of paraphrase it, but uh, what, are, what are some great channels for doing some, some direct advertising? Is that a good way to put it? Not just the main social media channels, correct? Right. So we talk about Google and Facebook a lot, but the reality is, is uh, there, uh, and again, this is dependent on industry. So like if you're selling SaaS, SaaS software, 
Twitter has a very strong track record of success with uh, running ads on there. They've got some great white papers on how to effectively implement a Twitter campaign for, for creating downloads, uh, especially for native apps. It's, uh, it's pretty effective. Uh, LinkedIn is hit or miss. Uh, it can create some opportunity and business development opportunity. We've seen some success with doing, running some ads on LinkedIn, surprisingly. Uh, Pinterest has some, some effect. We've seen some incredible results with Instagram uh, as well. Instagram seems to be uh, where there's a, a ton of opportunity. And then if your target audience is, is skews younger, uh, there's opportunities in Snapchat as well. And, uh, and of course, uh, emerging ones. And just a quick question. This is just a quick social media question to the room. How many, in pe how many people in here signed up for Vero? Yeah. yeah, so Vero is a new social media network that just kind of kind of blew up and disappeared almost overnight. I feel like it's po the Pokemon Go of, of social media, but <laughs> I was just curious. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, and because, because we're in marketing, uh, as I roll out here, uh, if everybody doesn't mind, uh, please, uh, let's stand up and take a, uh, a, a group shot together for, for uh, WordCamp Miami. <laughs>